Alright, so it was a busy week for Odyssey news last week. As well as the second developer diary there was also a developer interview by the website Polygon, a discovery scanner livestream from the community team that actually answered lots of questions and also content creators on the Frontier Collaboration Program were provided with some further details. It was a huge amount to take in so we've distilled everything down that we now know about Elite Dangerous Odyssey and we're going to detail it for you right now. If you enjoy this video remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our future updates. So here we go. Here are all the questions that were answered last week. The airless planets that are landable in Horizons will also be explorable on foot in Odyssey. The ground ports found on those planets will be upgraded with Odyssey. What upgraded means exactly we don't know but we're assuming that it means you'll be able to enter some of them at least. If you so desire you can choose to play your entire game on foot never owning or flying a spaceship yourself and instead using the Apex Interstellar Taxi Service to move around the galaxy but there will still be areas that are unreachable without a ship. This is a genius idea and it serves as a gateway to bring lots of other players to Elite and to the Elite Universe that otherwise wouldn't have given the game a second look. The Apex Taxi Service won't provide instantaneous transport, there will be some travel time and it seems you'll be seated on the bridge for the journey similar to how it works with multi crew. Exactly how long the journeys will take we don't yet know and Frontier aren't saying any more about that at the moment. There are three different types of spacesuit that players can own that all specialise in different disciplines exploration, scavenging and combat. You can swap between them wherever you are including Apex taxis, starports, SRVs and of course your own ship and the suits have upgradable modules that you'll earn through playing the game. The general idea seems to be that your suit very much echoes the model that Frontier have designed for ships. It's expected that players will eventually have multiple versions of the same suits but that they will be upgraded and modified in different ways to suit different jobs and scenarios. Your suit has a battery based power supply and does come with shields just like a ship. It's expected that players will have a favourite suit to match their playstyle and will upgrade that suit to its full potential. Again very similar to the way ships work. The suits are such a big deal in Odyssey that Frontier are planning to devote an entire livestream to the subject in the run up to Odyssey's release. When it comes to purchasing suits, weapons and equipment etc Frontier are saying that other valuable items aside from credits will be required in order to buy them but we don't know any more details other than that at the moment. We're wondering here if items scavenged from wrecks will be needed to smooth the trade when making a purchase for the new equipment but that really is just a guess at this point. Whilst on foot players will be able to pick up missions from mission boards inside stations as well as from some NPCs but fear not the in ship mission board you're used to seeing will still be available and actively handing out missions without the need for you to leave your ship. Inside the galaxy's social hubs at starports and ground installations etc there are 6 shops or services. Pioneer Supplies who are general outfitters of weapons, spacesuits and related consumables. Inter Astra which is the on foot equivalent of the shipyard where you'll be able to preview and purchase starships. Frontier Solutions, a service that essentially allows players to become a mercenary soldier of fortune experiencing combat scenarios without necessarily aligning to any given faction in the game world. Apex Interstellar Transport, a taxi service for transporting players throughout the Milky Way. Vista Genomics, a service that buys genetic information players gather from newly discovered life forms encountered while on foot kind of like Stellar Carter Graphics but for the new exobiologist rank. The Black Market Odyssey introduces some new kinds of stolen and illicit goods with its on foot gameplay. Here's where you can shift some of the more shady cargo. The social spaces in stations have been built with efficiency in mind so don't expect to be walking for miles to get to the different shops and services. Where needed there are also elevators to move players around stations. 
The NPCs in social hubs will differ depending on where you go and will change based on the factions that control the hub at a given time and the availability of certain types of missions will be affected by the background simulation in much the same way as it is currently. The on foot gameplay will be presented in first person perspective only. There's no third person option. This is likely to prevent scenarios like being able to see over the top of objects or round corners etc during combat giving an unfair and unrealistic advantage and is indeed in line with the starship gameplay we're familiar with. To the question which type of stations will include interiors Frontier have answered with Coriolis, Orbis, mining outposts and trade depots. There's no mention of the Acela starports at this time so we're assuming that they just won't have the facility. It appears that there are three types of social hub which will have an appearance and size suited to fit the surroundings therein. Those types are planetary port, space port and outpost. Low gravity planets and outposts in particular will be interesting to see as they have no artificially generated gravity like the rotating stations so we're assuming here that there will be some sort of magnetic boot solution to keep you planted firmly on the deck but Frontier have made no comment on that currently. The Polygon article estimates that these social hubs alone equates to over 40,000 social spaces. Suffice to say out of necessity there is going to be a lot of repetition in those social hubs but the team are attempting to add some variation, colour and character to the different hubs via things like hanging banners and flags etc. It appears that the new planetary points of interest known as settlements are going to play a big part in Odyssey's gameplay and will have different themes to their operations that will reflect in their appearance such as agricultural, military etc and they'll be populated as you'd expect by appropriately themed NPCs. Whilst you may be sent to any one of the thousands of new planetary settlements in the game for part of a mission there's really nothing to stop you raiding a settlement anytime you wish and looting the place either on the quiet or by removing the local population as you encounter them. As with the game at present your reputation with a given faction will reflect what missions you are given. Again, much like the game at the moment, you can be attacked by NPCs on foot without provocation. What those NPCs motivations are and what form those attacks take we don't yet know. On the recent Discovery Scanner livestream mission designer Luke Betterton described Odyssey's missions as providing quote ...interesting stories and compelling reasons unquote for doing the things that they require of you. Frontier have said that when accepting missions from an Odyssey NPC players have the opportunity to negotiate for more reward from the mission giver. How the NPC reacts to your negotiation attempts will be down to your reputation with the faction that the NPC represents and your experience with the type of mission they're asking you to complete. Some of the containers that you find while scavenging wrecks will require more work to get them open and get at what's inside. We don't know precisely what will be involved yet. All Frontier have said so far is that tools will be required to get them open. The NPCs who send you on a scavenging mission will only be after one object so anything else you find while recovering that one thing is yours to do with as you please but also a mission will not necessarily be required to go scavenging. It's something you can just choose to do just for yourself if you so desire. The BGS is alive and well in Odyssey and missions undertaken on foot will still affect the BGS in some way the same as a starship mission does at the moment and Frontier have assured that they are aware that plenty of players prefer to play the game without ever entering into conflict and Odyssey will have missions that support that kind of gameplay. And as with the main game at the moment some missions will require a more nefarious approach to complete putting you on the wrong side of the law. Factions will have NPC representatives at starports that you'll actually be able to see. They'll no longer just be a face on the mission board. You can walk around the outside of your ship whilst it's in the hangar in Odyssey and will be able to appreciate the scale of the ships and walking from the outside of planetary settlements to the inside will be seamless with no loading screens. 
Inside the social spaces NPCs will be walking around and going about their business and you can sit and just watch people if you so desire and that includes looking out of the huge windows and watching the activity in the starport beyond with ships coming and going. And interactions with NPCs will be presented with a mix of voice acting and text. As was seen in the second dev diary motion capture technology has been extensively used in Odyssey and mixed together with a layer of hand keyed animation. Also whilst we don't have any specific details on how it will work or what it will involve an on foot version of CQC is coming with Odyssey. The tenuous atmospheres of Odyssey's new planets are, as expected, not breathable and a spacesuit will be required whilst outside. However, the settlements and planetary ports all have pressurised interiors and a spacesuit will not be necessary when inside. We don't yet know exactly how but NPCs will interact with each other and will respond differently to you based on your faction allegiances and finally, perhaps unsurprisingly, Odyssey is the single largest addition that Elite has ever had. So there we are, a fairly heavy swathe of information for sure but there's still so much that we don't know. What are you most curious to know about Odyssey or has your curiosity now been satisfied? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>